we just finished talking about the definition of a radian. Well, how many radians are there in one revolution on a circle? One revolution going around once all the way around is really just your circumference. So you should remember your formula for circumference is 2 pi r. But then, according to our definition, we've got to take the arc length, which is your circumference when you go around once, divided by your radius. So, 2 pi r over r, while the r's drop, you're left with 2 pi. So, 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi. Well, if 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi, what would 180 degrees be equal to? Well, it's just half of your 360, so it'd be half of your 2 pi, so just pi. 90 degrees is a quarter of your circle. quarter of the way around, a quarter of your 2 pi is 5 over 2. 270 is 3 quarters of the way around, so it's 3 quarters of 2 pi, 3 fourths of 2 pi, it's 2 pi over 3. So pi radians is really equal to 180 degrees. There will be times where you need to convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. If you are converting from degrees to radians, you want to multiply by pi over 180. When you are converting from 180 degrees or converting from radians to degrees, you want to use 180 degrees over pi is what you would want to multiply by. Either pi over 180 or 180 over pi is what you will use to convert from one unit to the other unit. Whenever you're dealing with degrees, you need to make sure you have the degree symbol. Down here, we have an angle of 5. That's going to be radians because there's no degree symbol. If there's no units indicated, it's assumed to be radians. So here we need to convert. These are the two factors that we need to multiply by. You may not remember which one's which. So if I bring this up here, if I need to take my 180 and multiply it by this, would my degrees drop? I'd need to have degrees in the top and degrees on the bottom. In this case, it won't. So that's why I want to take my 225, multiply it by the other one, the pi over 180. When I multiply by pi over 180, I have degrees on the top, degrees on the bottom, they're going to drop. You want to go ahead and leave a pi in your answer. So now, your degrees will drop top and bottom. All you have to do is take 225 divided by 180, simplify that, and you end up getting 5 pi over 4. When you are looking at converting your radians into degrees, and it looks like I forgot the over 4 here. Now, if I go ahead and multiply it by this, I'd have a pi in the top, pi in the top, not going to drop. That doesn't always work, but I would end up with degrees in the bottom. I'm trying to go from radians and to end up with degrees. I don't want to have degrees in the bottom. So I'd want to have degrees in the top. So to go ahead and have degrees in the top, I'd multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Then your pi's would drop. Then all you have to do is multiply your 7 times your 180 degrees over 4, and you get 315 degrees. Same idea with the next two. You may not know which one to use to begin with, but if you look at your units, it'll tell you. 
So we multiply by pi over 180 degrees. The degrees drop. You're going to have a pi in your answer. Take your 330 divided by 180. You could do that in your calculator and fractionize it if you want. Same idea over here. You're going to take and multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's drop, then you get 180 degrees over 3. 180 divided by 3 is 60. This one here, we have 3. That ends up being 3 radians. We want to turn it into degrees, minutes, seconds. So then you have to go ahead and convert that by multiplying it by 180 degrees over pi, because that's going to convert it into degrees. You then get 540 degrees over pi. You want to type that in. Then you want to DMS it. Remember to turn it into degrees, minutes, seconds. You go apps, second apps on your calculator, down to number 4, and hit enter. And then it gives you 171. And that's wrong. I forgot the degree symbol here, so it's 171 degrees, 53 minutes, 14.419 seconds. And you can see the work over here on the calculator. Now, we also will have times where we need to find the arc length. You know your angle is your arc length of S over R. So basically, that's the definition of your radians. All you have to do then to find your arc length, which is S, is to solve it. So you just multiply both sides by R. And you get your arc length S is equal to R times theta. But keep in mind your angle has to be in radians. There's also a formula for figuring out the area of the sector. Basically, if you had a big pizza cut into kind of the triangle shapes, and you ate all these pieces, what would be the area of that piece of the pizza that you ate? That formula is 1 half times your radius squared times your angle. But once again, your angle has to be in radians. We also have angular speed, which is the measure of your central angle in radians divided by time. We also have linear speed when you're dealing with going around a circle. That's the arc length divided by the time. 